there's a simple test for determining whether or not a graph represents a one-to-one -one function. Now, the assumption here is that we've already determined that the graph represents a function by passing the vertical line test. And so as long as we've established that we have a function, you can then apply the horizontal line test, just run a horizontal line down the graph, and as long as the horizontal lines only hit the graph in at most one point, then that graph is going to be a one-to-one -one function. Now, what I would like to do is I would like for us to go through all the parent functions that we've talked about so far this semester and determine whether or not they are one-to-one. -one. Starting with the identity function, okay? So the identity function is the guy who looks like this. He's just that slanted line like that, okay? Now, if we look at this, I hope that we can very quickly see that this is going to pass the horizontal line test. No matter where I draw the horizontal lines, everything's going to be fine. So we can say definitively that this is a one-to-one -one function. So any of the functions that we have that have x, they're linear functions. I don't mean the constant function that would just be something like f of x equals 3, but anything that has a slope other than 0 and that's not undefined is going to pass the horizontal line test, which means it's going to be one-to-one, -one, which then means it has an inverse. Okay. The next graph that we saw, the next parent function was f of x is equal to x squared. This is your classic parabola. This is your squaring function. And here is the shape. Right? There's a parabola. And you can tell that when I do a horizontal line, it's going to cross it in more than one point. So this is not a one-to-one -one function. And we just saw that in the last video, where we had f of x equals x squared. And it is a function, but just because you get an output doesn't mean there's only one number that gets there. We did an example with 16, and we saw that we could plug in 4 or negative 4, and both of those guys would yield positive 16 when plugged into the function. So it's not one-to-one. -one. And since it's not one-to-one, -one, we can't really talk about it having an inverse, unless, unless we do something like this. If we were to cut off half of that, and you were to restrict the domain to just be from zero to infinity, then that guy would pass the horizontal line test, and we could talk about what the inverse would be for that particular half of the graph. But as it stands right now, no, we can't say anything about it being one-to-one -one because it's clearly not. All right, next on our list was the cubing function. So looking at x to the third. So x to the third was the cactus who has a shape that looks very, very similar to this. Okay, give or take. Again, these are just rough sketches. And so if we try to do that horizontal line test, everything's fine no matter where we draw the horizontal line. Now some people might argue, what about right here? Well, even though it does look like it's getting flat, it's just getting flat there for just a moment as it starts to curve back up. So this guy will pass the horizontal line test, and this is a one-to-one -one function. And since it is one-to-one, -one, as we're going to see in a little bit, it has an inverse. And we're going to talk about what is an inverse and how do we how do we come up with those inverses? All right, one of my favorite guys is the absolute value function. f of x equals the absolute value of x. And I hope that you remember the shape. And the shape is just a v-shape like that. And you can see that if you do a horizontal line test, that this fails. So this is not this is not one to one. Since it's not one to one, it doesn't have an inverse. Alright, we have four more graphs to look at real quickly. Alright, next up is your square root function. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. So when I think about this shape, it's the little half sideways parabola. At least that's how we've been describing it this semester, right? Now notice I said a half sideways parabola. 
which means it's probably connected to the parabola somehow, right? Well, if you look at this, he is going to pass that horizontal line test, so he is going to be one-to-one. -one. And as we've already mentioned, if he's one-to-one, -one, he's going to have an inverse. Now think about this, what would be the inverse of a square root? Think back to those equations that we've solved this semester where square roots were involved. The way that we undid a square root is that we would square to get rid of the square root. Well, this guy's shape is connected to the square's shape, but it's not the whole guy. So if I were to cut this off right here, this graph and that graph would be complete inverses of each other and be perfect. So this guy has an inverse, which would just be this part of the parabola with a restricted domain. But this guy does not have an inverse. I know it's kind of weird, but all it comes down to restrictions on domain and range. All right. We did look at another radical function, the cube root of x. Excuse me. And so the cube root of x was a little snaky guy who looked like a cactus that had been blown over like that. And as you try to do that horizontal line test, you're going to find out that this is also another one-to-one -one function. And you think about what would be the inverse of a cube root? How would you undo a cube root? Kind of goes back to that power property. You'd use a power that matches the index, which means you would use something to the third power, which would be x to the third. And notice how similar these shapes are to one another. Well, they're inverses of each other, right? They're both one to one, which means they have an inverse. And here they are. All right, now we just learned in the last section two new parent functions, one of those being the reciprocal function. And the reciprocal function, we describe this guy as being the missed high five. So he looks something kind of like this. He's got those asymptotes, those horizontal and vertical asymptotes. He's got that restriction on the domain. And we have this shape. Now let's see if this guy's one-to-one. -one. As I draw my horizontal lines, everything's fine. Yeah, this guy's this guy's one to one, so no problems whatsoever. He has a one to one function, which means he has an inverse. All right, and the last guy that we had, the last of our parent functions, was the reciprocal squaring function f of x is equal to one over x squared. In his shape. is that volcano shape. And I think it's pretty easy to see that this guy is not going to be one-to-one. -one. You draw a horizontal line and he ruins it for us. So this guy is not one-to-one. -one. All right, so we've just done several examples of what's one-to-one, -one, what's not one-to-one, -one, and now in the next video we're going to talk about how do we go about actually finding what the inverse is and what does it mean to be an inverse. So. Click on through and see what happens.